Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and I am back again to do another question and answer video. See, I just got an email today talking about copyright and transcriptions and I thought it was such a great email that I asked the guy if I could answer the email in a video because I thought other people might enjoy the answer. So uh, to keep his privacy, we're not going to name the gentleman, but I'm going to read the email and I am going to give you the answers. So. Hi Levi, I'm from Italy, a fellow YouTube transcriber, not of your level though. I've been transcribing and making cover videos on YouTube since 2013, and I only did it for fun and to improve as a guitar player. But last year, after some John Mayer covers I did, I started to receive thousands of requests to get my transcriptions. Man, if you're getting thousands of requests, you, you've got a business there. <laughs> uh, let me go on though. And, and I still do. I shared my work with lots of people, and when I put it on my website for purchase, uh, people kept buying them, but I recently read that it's not legal, is it? I can't understand this since there seems to be nothing online about this matter, and websites like Ultimate Guitar are still alive, and I guess making money through ads, etc. He then goes on to say, I currently removed my transcriptions page from my website. Can you help me? How can I share my transcriptions legally? He's put my, my transcriptions legally. Do I need to become a sort of editor? Do I need to ask uh, each single artist for a license? P.S. I don't transcribe following people's requests. I just transcribe songs that I like and I don't have an official transcription sheet. Uh, I used to put them online for free or prices for coffee or anything like that. So thanks in advance. So it's a great question. It's a really good question. And Unfortunately, you won't like the answer. The answer is yes, it's absolutely illegal. That doesn't mean that you won't get away with doing it. That doesn't mean you should do it. You will get away with doing it up until you don't get away with doing it. Really, the legality around this is you can only copyright a piece of music one time. So John Mayer recorded the song Neon. He wrote the song Neon. He owns the copyright to that song. Now, when you transcribe that song... Sure, you might have done the transcription, but he still owns the song. He still owns the thing that's written down on the piece of paper. So for you to then sell that commercially, that presents a problem because you're selling his copyright. So you're, of course you are right that you would need a license, a print, it's called a print license. You'd require a print license in order to sell transcriptions of this legally. That way, uh, you know, John Mayer would, would get royalties for each sale. That's the way the system works. Now, uh, I have a background in, in music publishing, surprise, surprise, uh, and the reality of the situation is a little bit more complicated. You see, print in publishing is a dying medium. Companies like uh, uh, Music Sales, which is a big one in, in the UK, they are hurting right now, and they're not putting their time and effort and money into print licenses because people don't buy music books so much anymore compared to other ways that they as a publishing company they can make money on their publishing for example by licensing songs into films or licensing songs into adverts if you're going to get you know twenty thousand pounds to a license a film uh, license a song into a film a small film you are going to do that over getting the odd 500 pound here and there for a print license because ultimately, like I say, books just aren't really selling like they used to in the past. Now, you know, if you went back hundreds of years, then that side of publishing, print licenses, were extremely valuable because that was the only way that you could get music to people because there weren't recordings. You know, you would literally have sheet music and then that would be given to your musicians and they would play it. So there was good money in it. But now print licenses, they're not as lucrative for artists. So, right, how do we progress from here then? Well... It's worth mentioning Ultimate Guitar. You mentioned Ultimate Guitar. You are right, Ultimate Guitar have tabs online and they make money from advertising. Now, what Total uh, Ultimate Guitar do is not legal. It's absolutely not legal. They skirt around it because as far as I'm aware, their servers are in Russia. So it's more a case of not what we're doing is legal it's what we're doing isn't legal in your country but good luck stopping us kind of thing there have been tab sites that have been closed down when i was learning initially mx tabs was where we would all go for guitar tabs now i do i see both sides of the argument of course like a tablature for a song on guitar is a very useful tool for a learner but it skirts around the copyright of the person that wrote the song 
there, there are benefits to, to both sides. Like on the one hand, of course I want the artist to make money, but on the other hand, you know, it was, it was getting tabs of offspring and Slipknot and Joe Satriani and stuff like that when I was younger that furthered my interest in music and made me a passionate supporter of these artists. The problem with that as an argument is that's not my argument to make. That is the argument, it's, actually it's not even an argument, that's totally down to the copyright holder. It's absolutely down to the copyright holder to say, cool, yeah, you know, tab my song, share them around with your friends, I see the benefit. But you can't take issue with somebody if they say, I don't want transcriptions of my music online. Because that, again, that's their right. And we don't have the right to take away their rights. It's their copyright, let them do what they want with it. Even if you think it's a bad, if, if you think they're making bad decisions. So, I guess people are probably wondering, well, Levi, how does this factor into what you do? Yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one, right? It's a definitely a gray area. What you'll notice is you can't go on my website and have a list of every transcription I've ever done in my career, and then you just buy it. Now, I can point you in the direction of websites that do do that. I can think of guys that transcribe songs for themselves, and then you put them up on their website for download, and you pay them money. It's a dangerous game. In fact, I was speaking to someone just recently that does bass transcriptions, and he actually puts books together, and he releases unlicensed books. Brave, very brave man. Now, the issue, or not issue, the, the, what he said when I was talking to him was he spoke to a lawyer and really all he has to worry about is getting a cease and desist from the copyright owner. Now, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's what would happen. And it worries me that a lawyer would say, yes, what you're doing is illegal, but don't worry about it until it becomes a, an issue. Um, but if that's the way he wants to operate, then of course he, he can operate like that. Uh, but yeah, from my perspective, it's not a smart thing to do. So with regards to what you're doing and how you're wanting to move forward with that, what I would suggest to do is share the transcriptions for free. Because when you do that, you don't run into the problem of you are breaching someone's copyright, but you're not doing it for commercial reasons. So it's considerably less likely that the owners are going to take issue with what you've done. Or you can go my route of doing things, which is I don't have a list of any of my transcriptions online because that's not how I work. I don't actually do transcriptions for people to purchase. That's not my business. My business is my time. If somebody says, I would like to learn this solo, can you transcribe it for me? I will say, yes, it's going to take me this amount of time, therefore it's going to cost you this much money. That's a slightly different thing. I'm not really selling the transcription, I'm selling my time in the same way that if I was a teacher and you came to me and said, hey Levi, I'd like to learn Master of Puppets by Metallica, can you teach that to me? I'm not going to say, well unfortunately I can't because I don't have a print license to give you the tabs for it. But I'm going to hold my hands up and say it's totally a, a messy area legally and a lot more clarification could go into it. So that's really all I have to say on, on that matter. Uh, it's a very interesting subject and I admire that you're interested enough to actually reach out to me and ask me. Of course, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer, so there are probably better people to ask. Uh, but the only thing I will point out is you said that you couldn't find much information on this online. There's plenty of information on this. It's all copyright law and it's all about print licenses. So you can look into those two things. You know, you could absolutely also look into it from the perspective of future business. If you've got a lot of high quality John Mayer transcriptions, then you know you could reach out to John Mayer or John Mayer's publisher and talk about the idea of putting a book together. You could approach a bigger publishing house like Hal Leonard, and you could say, you know, I've done this body of work, it'd be great to release it. And they might go, yeah, cool, we see the business opportunity here, we will pay you X fee, and then we will license it and we'll print it. And, you know, tons of options, of course, but that's really down to you. But yeah, I'd absolutely say having a list of your transcriptions on your website and selling them is a dangerous game to play. And it's not one that I would advise you to continue doing. Uh, just think about it more logically. If you're in it for education, that's a much, much easier case to argue. But when you're clearly, you know, literally just selling the same transcriptions over and over and over, and in your own email, you even said to me thousands of requests. Now, I don't know how many you're actually selling, but if there's one transcription and you've had thousands of people request it, and then it's on your website for $3, it's from John Mayer's publisher's perspective, they would absolutely look at that and go, well, this guy's definitely made money that he had no right to make. We're getting our lawyers on this. So yeah, dangerous one, don't do it. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for the email. It was a great email and one that I was really happy to talk about. So um, lastly, I just want to say a huge thank you to these people over here. 
It wasn't one of these people that sent me that email, don't worry. Um, thank you so much for your support, guys. These are some of my supporters over on Patreon.com. They bring these videos to you. They These are the guys that, even when I'm dying of a cold right now, I'm still a bit, a little bit gravelly. Uh, and I'm dying to cough as well, but I've, I've avoided it so far. Um, thanks to these guys, you know, I can look after myself, take time in bed, and then get out to make videos like this. So thank you so much, guys. Um, it is a real big help, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, so if you have any interest in checking me out on Patreon, you can do so by clicking this button up here. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here. You'll see two more of my videos here and here. And yeah, guys, don't be shy. If you have any questions, let me know in that comment section below. I am happy to answer questions, especially great questions like this that are of interest and use to people. So much love, and I will see you for another video soon. Laters.